scheduled 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBO Super Middleweight World Title. First, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome to the stage from Brighton, Sussex, England. With a record of 27 wins, two losses, he has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the top rank contender and the former IBO Super Middleweight World Champion, Chris Eubank. This is like a career match. They both got to win. James DeGale has acknowledged that if he loses, he's done, you know, and people are saying that he's done. He, he knows all that. In regards to Chris Eubank Jr., somebody that's been living in his house, a sparring partner, eating his food on his documentary, James Duglin, told him he's going to be told the fans and media, yeah, he's going to get exposed. Are we going to talk about it? In fact, let me pull it up. 11 stone, 13 and a half pounds, 11 stone, 13 and a half pounds, 167 pounds, 167 U.S. pounds for Chris Eubank Jr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to join us onto the stage from Carlston, London. He looks good. He looks like, you know, healthy. So this guy right here, this is from um, the Big Fight Live preview. This is on ITV box offices. Um, YouTube page. Basically, what it is is it's a docu series or drop, you know, build up to the fight, like All Access, HBO twenty four seven. That used to be. It's one of those, but they do one for each fighter. I like them. So this guy who who has been helping Chris Bank Jr. in his camp, Dennis Duglin, has been talking shit, saying that he's gonna get exposed. Me and Chris Bank Jr. Oh, excuse me. Make Chris Eubank look small, right? You don't want to miss our featured attraction of the evening. 12 rounds for the Vegas IBO Super Middleweight World Championship. James Chucky Miguel, Chris Eubank. The blood is back. The blood is back. The blood is too bad. Doing all that talking, they better thank Al Heyman. They better thank Al Heyman. But yeah, you know, interesting enough, I feel that the winner of this is going to go on to fight the winner of uh, Peter Quillen and um, Caleb Truax to be the mandatory for Caleb Plant. That's what I think is going on. But Caleb Plant will likely fight the winner of Anthony Durrell and Avni Yildirim and David Benavidez versus Jaylion Love. It's a bit of a tournament going on with the WBC and the IBF titles. Right now, Billy Joe is trying to get his hands on that WBO um, by fighting um, Shafat uh, Asari. It, it's, it's a free, how you pronounce his name? I'm going to get that video out later. I actually did it already. I just got to upload it. Um... Colum Smith, he's, you know, there. We don't know what he's going to do next. He's got to return soon. 
Uh, so Canelo Alvarez, obviously, you know, has that WBA world underling, but she can't really count, you know, him. We don't know what he's doing. He's fighting Danny Jacobs next and likely will be fighting another fight at 160 unless something super comes up. And pretty much that's it. But we're focusing on right now the fact that James DeGale is the overall better fighter than Chris Eubank Jr. Chris Eubank Jr. is just a warrior. He has heart. But skill wise, you know, it's not just it's, 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 it's not there. Like if he was to win tomorrow, it's going to be obviously the biggest win of his career. And depending on how James DeGale look, I mean, we saw what Caleb Truax was able to do. We saw that the repercussions of of the after the Baudu Jack fight, they seemed like it took something out of him. And Caleb Truax was able to go in there, you know, and expose it. But then guess what? He went and got his belt back. He did vacate it, though to not fight Jose Uzcat, the guy. And a lot of people not talking about that. And look what Caleb Plant did to Jose Uzcat, the guy. So he could have, you know, tested himself. Man, that's an ugly, ugly situation right there. But nonetheless, this is going to be on them ITV box office over in the UK. But here in the States, it's going to be a midday card. So let me break down tomorrow for you. Tomorrow, February the 23rd, 2019, it is... 10.03 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Friday, February 22nd, 2019. Tomorrow at 4 p.m. on Showtime, they're going to start with Lee Selby versus Omar Douglas, then Joe Joyce versus Bermain Saverne, and then this, the main event, James DeGale versus Chris Eubank Jr. All the fights are meaningful in regards to um, the futures of uh, championships in the 130 heavyweight and this division right here, 168. So... It's really not too much to talk about that um itv has done a really good job in you know putting out you know a lot of digital content on this fight their pay-per-view setting the bar of what their pay-per-views are going to be like in the future especially with bigger fights because this content i was looking the numbers like for example this right here this is chris eubanks let's go take a little quick look at it i covered um james de gales during my fight week preview so this one, we can look around this one a little bit and see what he's talking about. So this is the training partner right now that's here. Let me see if I can rewind back. One, two, catch, catch in the middle. Back. This defense is horrible. Seven. You're getting hit too much. You're standing too tall. Roll. Catch. Middle. Flip. Go back to the basics, you know, and that's what we put down. You know, he's been training out of all the top gyms in Las Vegas for years. He's given me a focus. He's my aggressive. Yeah. Use it against me, my aggressiveness. Yeah. He's starting things that I started to do when I was like eight years old when I used to fight, you know? He said he's never done that before in his career. I'm like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, I'm looking for the one part where basically Dennis Douglas. So he, here's Dennis Douglas with him and on oh, no, us. That's, that's Eubank Senior. Like Dennis Douglas was literally in his crib eating his food and everything, and now all of a sudden he's saying he's gonna get exposed. Well, let's listen to him. We fought nothing like George Groves. Never had before in my career. Dennis. Yeah. He's starting things that I started to do when I was like eight years old when I used to fight. You know. He said he's never done that before in his career. So the crazy thing is what this trainer is saying, I forgot his name, but basically what he's saying is that um, Chris Eubank Jr. is like not a fundamentally sound boxer. He's saying it's a lot of stuff that he's, he's teaching him now and he's learning now, but he seems like one of those fighters that don't want to listen. Look how he treats his corner man like early in his career, you know, where he just would have to be silent and let them, you know, do their little bullshit. But let's listen to a little bit more of this. And you're going to listen to Dennis Douglas too. Let's see where we at, where we at. Nah, there we are. But once again, you can watch this. It's 23 minutes long, 24 on the ITV uh, boxing YouTube page. I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. So wait, let's training out of all the top gyms in Las Vegas for years. He's given me a focus. He's my aggressive. Yeah. Use it against me, my aggressiveness. Yeah. He's starting things that I started to do when I was like eight years old when I used to fight, you know? He said he's never done that before in his career. I'm like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Good body shots. Yeah. Go through me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Sit. 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 For this fight. Yeah. That's it. I'm having the right sessions, the right focused training 
to beat a man like James Tegall, which I've never had before in my career. It's always just been get fit, That's hit it. the bags, roll out after that, and go in and do the job. So here's Dublin coming in. That's it. For that fight against George, my main sparring partner was a six foot seven cruiserweight who fought nothing like George Groves. I've been employed a full-time Southpaw sparring partner in uh, Dennis Dullin. Ah, he finished with the girl. I want him next. I want the girl too. Ah. Being a Southpaw is a completely different thing. It's where I can do a completely different fighter. Ah. And the girl's a great Southpaw. He's a very slick, awkward Southpaw. So um, I think I'm actually great for this work. I actually was in camp with Badu Jack when he fought the girl. So I beat Badu up and that helped him out. So mm. I think it's definitely gonna make a difference. He said he beat you up, Badu. Right, so, like <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's looking like that um that that fighter right there. The rumor is that's what they're saying on social media. I don't know. Wait, where did he say it at though? That's the thing. Let me see. Where did he say this? Who did he say it to? Chris Eubank Jr. hired chief sparring partner Dennis Duglin for the past six weeks. Eubank let him stay in his house, paid well, and enjoyed competitive spars. Douglin returned to America yesterday and declared the Gale is going to expose Eubank. Like, what the fuck? Where did it come from? Oh, wait, here's Dennis Douglin right here. Ooh, was it a lie? In the UK, when I was asked the question, I said I picked Chris because I was in his gym and staying at his house. I thought it would be rude to say james and then get in his car and go home lol so nothing against chris just my personal opinion oh shit he said i because i he said i picked chris because i was in his gym and staying at his house i thought it would be rude to say jay so he knew oh shit he is savage you're a savage mama's boy james Douglas. and why am i not following you oh shit LOL, you just compared Chris to Jesus. Wow, that's deep. Oh, shit. Oh, Dennis. Damn. Makes the fight more interesting. I'm going with James DeGale. If Chris Eubank Jr. win, I'm like, my God, oh, shit. He's the motherfucking man. I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. Please subscribe.